The minutes of Britain's mandate are ticking to an end, but the nations are still deliberating over the future of the Holy Land. Palestine in 1947 had reached its boiling point. 30 years had passed since the Balfour Declaration announced Britain's support for a national home for the Jewish people. Hundreds of thousands of Jewish refugees, survivors of the horrors of the Shoah, were trying to make their way to Palestine, but Britain had shut the gates to immigration. The Jewish underground movements increased military actions to force the British out. The British were fed up, and they had passed on the problem of the partition of Palestine to a United Nations committee in UNSCOP who were deliberating. Nobody really believed in our day the UN was a place where you deliberated and deliberated. They never did anything. They talked a lot. The United Nations Committee recommended an end to the British mandate and the partition of Palestine into two states, an Arab state and a Jewish state, and scheduled a vote in the UN General Assembly at Lake Success, New York. A two-thirds majority was required to pass the proposal. Despite the support of both the United States and the Soviet Union, many other countries needed to be convinced. You spoke to the Belgian, and you spoke to the Swede, and you spoke to the Brazilian, preaching, uh, explaining why all the time. And the refugees and the displaced people, they call them displaced persons in Europe. There were a number of us working at the same time also on uh, getting votes. A preliminary vote showed the Jewish agency delegation coming up short. The diplomatic team focused their efforts on three countries that were still undecided, Liberia, Haiti, and the Philippines. שהבטיח לו להצביע בעד, והנה מתברר שהשגריר שלהם בלייק סקסס הוא לא קיבל הוראה. מצאנו אותו, זה היה כבר מאוחר בלילה, התחלנו להסביר לו שהנשיא לא עמד בדיבורו, והיה שקט, אז התחלנו לשאול מה קרה, אז הוא אומר, תשמע, אני חושב, I'm thinking. מה, מה אתה חושב עכשיו בשלוש בבוקר? הוא אומר, אני חושב, איזה שעה... עכשיו בפיליפינים. ובסוף הייתה שיחה עם נשיא הפיליפינים, והוא הובטח שהשגריר שלו יקבל הוראה. He w they went down for two or three days, and on Wednesday before Thanksgiving, they came back and they said, Haiti will vote with us. Some people promised and voted against. Some people were pursued by us till the last minute and voted for. Diplomacy continued up until the vote itself was held. And there was a South American country I didn't want to tell you which, so our head of the Latin group, an Argentinian Jew who was in the Mishlacha, he went to the men's room and he recognized the men's shoes under the door and he knocked and he said, you promised to vote, they are voting now, I'm coming, I'm here to bring you to the voting And he voted. This was Saturday night. So somebody explained it can't be Friday night because En uh, Mashiach Babi Shabbat. Of course, we huddled around the radio, which was only a battery radio, and kept conking out. <laughs> אל מול הרדיו, אנחנו שוכבים על השולחנות, מתים מעייפות. היו יומיים בלי שינה, היה קרב באמצע. Jews throughout the world held their breath in anticipation. Those who are in favor will say yes, those who are against will say no. 
and the abstainers always they they know what to say. They went through the vote. We will stop it now. Afghanistan. We were keeping score. No. Argentina. On the radio in, in the office. And I remember a lot of the calls from Guatemala. Yes. Argentina. Abstention. Lebanon. No. Yugoslavia. And Spain. United Kingdom. And Spain. כשהגענו לעוד פי פיליפינים, אמרו כן, אז ידענו שאנחנו עשינו איזה, תרמנו משהו. בעד, פלוס, נגד, מינוס. At one point, we made it. The resolution of the Duck Committee for Palestine was adopted by 33 votes, 13 against, 10 abstentions. After the vote, people were crying. People were embracing. ואז יעצו כולם ויצאנו כולנו לרחבה המרכזית של העיר. And we said, now let's go into town. So we got a lift on the back of a British armored carrier with a gun. <laughs> But we're now we're all pals. We sat in the car, Charette, my husband and myself, from Lake Success to Manhattan, and nobody said a word. It was overpowering. Everybody was streaming towards the Jewish agency. The government in waiting of the state to be, headed by David Ben-Gurion. I have a picture of myself on the roof of the uh, Sofrut building. I don't know how I got there. It had the biggest single Pora dance I've ever seen in my life was that dance around that courtyard. Ben Gurion, standing on the balcony of the Sochnut building, the heart of Jerusalem, and he raised his hand and utter silence waited for his words. Tchi hamadina ha'ivrit. He called it the Hebrew state because it had no name and asked everyone to sing Hatikva. Well, as for these 20 centuries, we Jews were always the objects of history. That is an object where others made the decisions for us. As of that date onwards, we suddenly become again the subject of history. Well, we make the decisions for ourselves. Hargasha ita, miashav matril olav chadash, olav she'en bo migbalot, e'en bo ba'yot, tov lekulam. There you were sitting, and there your country was forming itself as a country. I remember the moment. Something is now about to happen. The dream of 2,000 years, maybe. I mean, that's when we started imagining what might be. Yeah.